Boy, have I got a fun project for you guys today. My parents' new cabin is completely off-grid, which means that if they want anything resembling a modern standard of living, they have got some problems to solve. Everything from power generation to clean drinking water to where to store sanitary waste is going to... Okay, well, I guess they figured all that out without me, leaving just one thing for their firstborn son. How to get an internet connection from all the way over there on the mainland to this point right here. Not even reaching the sea, it's fine. Thankfully, we've got a backup plan and it's gonna be a doozy. And it's brought to you by KiwiCo. KiwiCo ships out crates that contain hands-on projects for kids to help develop their creative confidence and problem-solving skills. Learn more at the end of this video or at the link down below. Step one of our little project today then is to take our two crews one that's gonna be stationed at Lions Bay Marina back there, and the other one that gets to ride across the water in my parents' boat with all the equipment that we're gonna need. One of our most important pieces of equipment, of course, is our Air Fiber 60LR dish slash radio system combo unit from Ubiquity. This is what we're gonna to use to get a 60 gigahertz beam up to one gigabit per second straight across the water. In theory, we're gonna have similar latency and bandwidth to if we just ran like a straight up Cat 5e network cable, except that we're gonna be going like, what is it, about five clicks? Something like that, about five kilometers. And now that we're on site, our next challenge is to figure out exactly where we're gonna get a clear line back to the marina. So Jake and I are <coughs> trying to sort this out. So unfortunately, due to us being a little time constrained, we had to go grab some stuff from the hardware store and come back. And by the time we got here, Linus had already shipped off on the boat to the other side. Now what that means is he wasn't able to stand here and tell me where roughly it is, so I'm trying to spot him. He's on that side like jumping, doing jumping jacks, waving his hands, and we're trying to see him through the binoculars, but they're not exactly um, the zoom I would want for the six-ish kilometers it takes to get over there, so this is gonna be a little tricky, but uh, we're gonna try to at least get a rough spot of where he is, and then we can move over to try to get the dish on the wall, and then tilt it from there. <sighs> Good luck to us. <laughs> it's so difficult to make it out like my I can't hold the binoculars steady enough to see an object hey, hey, I'm waving my arms around like a madman like he's a he's a pretty small human so oh wait hey do you see that boat going across right now I think I sent you a pin do you see the boat Negative. there is no boat anywhere near me is there like some crisscross lumber like set up as a support or construction or something Yes, that's the one, crisscross lumber. How can you not see me? There's no or there is? There is. There is, I think I see you then. Well, do you see a person jumping around or not? Hi, can you see this? Are you fingering me? All right, I think we have contact. I definitely can't see it, but I just assumed. All right, I'm heading back up to the house. As you can see, the inside is still a construction zone, which doesn't prevent my parents from putting up some pictures on the wall. You know, you gotta make it homey. Anyway, none of that's our problem because we're gonna be out here on the top deck. This is perfect. I couldn't tell from down there, but we have a perfect straight shot to the marina. I can see it clear as day. This is gonna be awesome. See that blue uh, kind of like uh, shipping container looking thing? Bright blue. It's just to the left of that. It's gonna be easy as pie. I think we are on what is the sketchiest scissor lift I've ever seen. Like, look at this. It's bent to crap. It shakes. It, it's got a little wiggle. Brandon really likes it. And uh, we only have to go that high. Like another one of me. So I, it's not gonna be that bad, but it, it's pretty sketchy. I guess it's better than a ladder though. You ready?
Oh, it's not that bad. Stop testing. Jake. I'm not, I have to go over here to do this. I'm just, all right, uh, I'm gonna grab the mount. Let's just try to walk in the middle, I guess. I'm, I'm not moving. You're not moving? I'm not moving. I gotta, okay. Time to sit my butt on this nice blue chair and do a haul video, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some ethernet cable. We've got a jackery just to power things while we're testing. We've got a cordless drill. We've got an edge switch 10XP. This is a 10 port power over ethernet switch. So we plug our included power adapter into the back here, and then it's gonna provide power to our connected devices over these RJ45 ports. Now these guys over here, these are SFP. They are not gonna be able to do power over ethernet, but if for whatever reason we had other SFP gear, we could connect it using that. We've also got this cute little guy. This is the UAP Flex HD. This is a lovely little wireless access point. It's PoE powered. It's outdoor rated, so that means that probably what we're gonna end up doing is taking this puppy, putting it right next to the switch, and I'm willing to bet with how open it is here and how little interference there is, I'm gonna get an internet connection on this from basically the entire property here. It comes with a PoE injector if you don't have a PoE switch, but we do, so we don't need that. Also, I'll need a laptop to connect up my gear over here. And of course, ah, yes. The big guy, the Air Fiber 60LR. Um, come on! Oh, that's my walkie. So we've got our dish here. We've got the, ah, yes, the uh, personal massager. <laughs> the shower head. Uh, this is the radio component of it, so this puppy. This is gonna go in a little something like that. And, ah, there you go. Oh yeah, we don't even need the manual. Who needs a manual, boys? Another PoE injector, we won't need that because we do have a PoE switch. This, um... okay, we'll check the manual. Okay, this clips on here. This pops open here so we can get at the RJ45 jack there. That's where our power over ethernet and of course our data are gonna come in. It runs down this arm comes out this uh, weather resistant thingamaboober here. And then all that's left is the pole mount that's included in the box and this. Anyway, so let's talk about mounting a little bit. Usually a dish like this would end up on the roof of a building, probably like a skyscraper or on a, a tower of some sort with a pole. But in our case, we're trying to mount it to the side of a building. So we looked at a few different options and it seemed like a satellite dish mount was the best course of action. And surprisingly, it's kind of difficult to get these things um, in really urban areas because they don't really use satellites a lot anymore. But I did find a guy that actually does satellite teardowns and he had a bunch of extra ones sitting in his storage locker. So bada bing, there we go. Now we are drilling into concrete, which makes this a little more difficult, but it should be okay. We got our hammer drill. We got some tap gone screws, which are made for concrete. Everything should be okay. I just sort of have to plan it out and mark it. And hope that that works. <laughs> you think like there is good? The only thing is once I put it on the wall, it's gonna be very difficult for me to adjust. I can't look through the viewfinder, if you know what I mean. Linus is like on a deck on that side, so he can look through a viewfinder. Oh, you're right, Andy. This is the viewfinder. There you are. I guess we don't really have much choice, so. The hole on the mount is actually a little bit bigger than the hole that we need, so I got a little bit of flexibility. Is it just me or is that like spinning? Whoa. <laughs> wow, it literally completely stripped it. We are following the instructions. Yeah, maybe it's just really strong wall or something. I also got some different ones that are a little smaller. I did bring another solution. <laughs> some like plugs. I'm having the time of my life right now. Okay, wow, I am so glad that we were able to get it in there. <laughs> I was starting to get a little worried there. Now let's talk some speeds and feeds for this bad boy. This right here, regular old gigabit network port, but what's special about it is that it uses 60 gigahertz wireless in order to fully saturate this thing. So that is two gigabit total, one gigabit send, one gigabit receive, if Ubiquiti's uh, specs are to be believed. As for how they get around the range limitations of 60 gigahertz, if you guys remember, 
60 gigahertz can be blocked by a piece of paper if you happen to have, you know, Y gig in your house. So how are we gonna, how's it gonna go five kilometers across the water? Well, that's because A, there's no piece of paper in between, that's very important, and B, because these antennas are sending just a narrow beam of data across the water instead of just trying to send it in all directions, they're much more focused and they can do up to apparently 12 kilometers on this particular model. We're gonna leave that over there for now. And I wanna talk about the mount a little bit. So this is a pretty cool piece of kit they include with this, with this dish. It actually has a bunch of very accurate adjustments you can do just by the degree. And then once you figure it out, you've done your alignment tool, you've gotten it where you want it to be, you can actually just lock them on, on both axes, which is really cool. Now, what we're probably gonna to have to do is clamp this on, get it where we think roughly it should be, and it might be a good hour of tilting and screwing around with it until we get it where we want it to be. Got the screwdriver, lttstore.com. Just kidding, we don't have those yet. Uh, but the dad hats are coming soon. These are sick, they're awesome. I've got two different screw sizes, Andy. I've got the good enough to hold it up size, and I've got the just in case someone has a couple wobbly pops and decides to try to hang off of it. Let's go with the uh, big boy. You want the big boy? All right, you, you got it. All right, I think we're good now. Is everyone happy? I can go ahead and lean off the porch. Yep. All right, someone gonna pull me back in? I guess I can use the rope. All right, what are we secured to? Woo! That's real high up, boys! Okay. I think this is a ubiquity approved installation method. What do you think, Brennan? There is a viewfinder that this thing comes with. Linus probably showed you it. This little guy, and you actually clip it into the back of the dish but I don't really have a way to look through it. You know, actually, maybe if I put it on this side, I think it can mount in a couple. Oh my God. That's a good catch. The viewfinder they include with this kit is really nice because it forces your perspective to be in line with the dish and where it's pointed. I thought I was decently lined up, right? But if I look through the viewfinder, I am pointed right at the ocean. So I'm gonna adjust this up a little bit and now, I am pointed at the sky, which I also don't want. I got my harness, so I'm not too worried about falling to my death at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and loosen this a little bit. There we go. Now we're a little off. We're probably about, I'd say, five degrees low. Wow, actually, I don't know, actually. <laughs> we might have freaking nailed it. All right, I'm going to leave it right there and uh, we'll have to wait until Linus is ready to go. Now, obviously the plan would be to power this using something other than a portable battery bank. So they're gonna have a combination of solar, wind, and then there's actually a little creek that runs through the property that uh, gets water about eight months out of the year. So that's the plan for the future. But for today, we're just testing it. So I'm just gonna plug us into this. As with most of Ubiquiti's other stuff, this is PoE powered. Usually a PoE injector like this would be mounted inside um, or you'd have a PoE powered switch. But for now, we're just gonna have this up on the scissor lift with us. And I put a really long cable, so maybe once it's lined up, we can go down to the ground, but I'd, that's probably gonna be a while. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get an ISP to run internet here yet. They said it's gonna be a couple week lead time. So instead, we brought our little LTE puck, which is kind of funny, because you would usually just take the LTE puck to the other side and have that as your internet, but no, we wanna test this link. So this is gonna act as our router and provide us some internet access so we can actually try this out. Ugh, pretty easy. Bam, we're plugged in, that's all I gotta do. It's working! I haven't even connected to the Bluetooth thing yet. You plugged it in? I guess we just lined it up. It says our our link is about 77% optimal, but it says our capacity is two gigabit right now. Are you kidding me right now? You know, the whole time over here, I've been like, this is gonna be cake, this is gonna be cake. And then I was kind of setting it up for that moment in the video where Linus kept <laughs> proving to be wrong, but I mean, it, was it that cake? It was pretty cake. It says our capacity is two gigabit. I guess with 78% link, that's enough. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm just straight up connected to you now. 
I grabbed the driver and boom, I like, let me just see. Here it is. We're logged into the Gambier House dashboard. We can see our Air Fiber 60 LR B and A. So one of them's at Lions Bay Marina. One of them's at the Gambier House. They've both got their IP addresses, their uptime. Fantastic. I am in the dashboard on my computer and I am connected to the dish on my phone. Everything is bueno. Sweet. Did you touch the dish at all? Sure didn't. You know what? I wonder if it's just people moving around. All right, we got to wrap this up pretty quick here. How do we do the uh, fine tuning thing? I'm just tightening my mounting bracket down to the J pole. It's amazing how much a little bit of wibble wobbling affects things. Immediately when you were like, oh, I'm tightening it down, I saw it jump all over the place. Honestly, I think we, we nailed it right out of the gate. I got a little more horizontal adjustment to do, so give me a, give me a minute. I guess at this distance, like, you gotta be adjusting it like fractions of a degree. It's crazy how much of a difference like a quarter turn of this knob makes in terms of where it's actually pointed if you look through the viewfinder. It's very responsive though. Like you can see within about a second or two if what you're doing is working. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> What'd you do, move in front of the antenna? I actually bobbed it with my elbow. This is it, cool. big test Speed time. Test. All right, okay, I'm starting. Ping is one millisecond. Nice. Oh, look at this. Look at this. 800, 923 megabit per second download, 903 upload. It, it fluctuates a bit, but that's pretty impressively stable. What? Fluctuate? That's freaking rock solid. Oh, that's freaking awesome. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. This is great. So all they got to do is a little bit of cable management, get that cable run into the house, and that's something they can handle on their side. And then we're we're ready to rock. Pretty exciting. Wait, I want to try a one-way test, because I think theoretically we can get higher speed. Oh, wow. Without the Ethernet port as a bottleneck, like this thing is actually capable of greater than the network port on the freaking thing. So we're going across the water, and we're literally bottlenecked by the wire. You know what else there's a metaphor for? This segue to our sponsor. <laughs> you know it, baby. <laughs> Big thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. KiwiCo is a monthly subscription service that helps introduce and make STEAM topics fun and engaging for kids of all ages. KiwiCo believes that if you start learning small things today, you can produce world-changing ideas tomorrow. Each crate is designed by experts and contains everything you need to complete it with detailed, kid-friendly instructions. That means you don't need to run off to the store to get extra supplies like glue or scissors. It's all ready to go. They've got eight different subscription lines, each catering to a different age group and different kinds of topics. And the crate that we're looking at here is at Kiwi level for kids ages five to eight that teaches programming and robotics. Another one is the Eureka level, which is for teens aged 14 plus, which highlights basic engineering and sound practices. KiwiCo is a great way to keep kids not to mention adults, occupied for hours, and they now ship to over 40 different countries. So don't wait, fight summer brain drain today at kiwico.com LTT to get your first month for free. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might, you might enjoy us not doing it quite as successfully. So maybe go check out our last attempt. We did a greater distance that time, but boy, was it ever a nightmare to get it working. This is totally painless. And look how good it looks by comparison. You can see right through the dish, it hardly even obstructs the view. <laughs>